Introduction to Conveyancing a Residential Property In theory employing a solicitor to convey the legal aspects of buying in your home should be fairly straightforward. However, you only have to look at solicitors' reviews online to realize that this process can become very difficult and complicated, and take a long time. There are many reasons for that which I will not go into right now. However, suffice to say that I have learned the hard way. That said I have come to understand the conveyancing process and that understanding has helped me greatly, and helped the process run smoothly and speedily. I hope that this lesson that I have put together which covers the key aspects of conveyancing can help you also. In this lesson we will look at some of the legal aspects to buying a property. We will also consider the crucial role of the land registry. Finding a solicitor. Finding a good conveyancing solicitor can be a challenging task, but there are several steps you can follow to make sure you find someone who is right for you. 1. Ask for recommendations. Talk to friends, family, and work colleagues who have recently bought or sold a property. They may be able to recommend a conveyancing solicitor they have used and were happy with. 2. Research. Look up conveyancing solicitors in your local area and read reviews and ratings from previous clients. This will give you an idea of their level of experience, customer service, and how well they handle cases. 3. Compare quotes. Get quotes from several conveyancing solicitors and compare their fees, services, and experience. This will help you find the best value for your money. 4. If you are buying into a limited company, it may be best to use a commercial solicitor. 5. Ask questions. Be bold and ask questions about the solicitor's experience, process, and fees. This will help you get a better understanding of what you can expect and will also help you assess whether they are the right fit for you. Remember, a good conveyancing solicitor will make the process of buying or selling a property smoother, faster, and less stressful, so it is worth taking the time to find the right one for you. Using a bad solicitor could cause delay and cause you to lose out on a possible sale or purchase. Also, if interest rates increase during the process, your final mortgage will be considerably higher than you had anticipated. It is vital that you understand all the conveyancing documents that are required for the conveyancing process. I have previously lost a property because the title deed's registration was not executed correctly. The order or sequence in which conveyancing documents are issued can vary depending on the specific circumstances and practices of the parties involved. However, here is a general outline of the typical order in which conveyancing documents are issued, formally instruct a solicitor. The process begins when a buyer formally instructs a solicitor or licensed conveyancer to handle the conveyancing on their behalf. Review of contracts The conveyancer reviews the draft contract provided by the seller's conveyancer. They ensure that all necessary information is included and negotiate any amendments or additional terms as required. Preliminary inquiries. The conveyancer raises preliminary inquiries with the seller's conveyancer to clarify any issues, or seek additional information about the property, including fixtures and fittings, boundaries, and any ongoing disputes. Property information form and fittings and contents form. The seller completes the property information form and fittings and contents form which provide details about the property and what fixtures and fittings will be included in the sale. And information on boundaries, ongoing disputes, planning permissions, and other relevant information. Other searches. Various searches are conducted to gather information about the property and its surroundings. Common searches include local authority searches, environmental searches, and water and drainage searches. Contract of Sale Agreement Signed by Buyer and Seller The Contract of Sale, also known as the Sale Agreement, is a legally binding agreement between the buyer and seller of a property. It outlines the terms and conditions of the property sale and establishes the rights and obligations of both parties. The Contract of Sale typically includes details such as 1. Parties involved Names and contact information of the buyer and seller 2. Property details. Description and address of the property being sold. 3. 
Purchase price. The agreed upon price for the property. 4. Payment terms. How and when the purchase price will be paid, including any deposit required. 5. Completion date. The date when the transfer of ownership is scheduled to occur. 6. Conditions and contingencies. Any specific conditions or contingencies that need to be satisfied before the sale can proceed, such as property inspections or financing arrangements. 7. Fixtures and fittings. What fixtures and fittings will be included in the sale? The contract of sale is typically signed by both the buyer and seller after they have reached an agreement on the terms of the sale. The timing of when the contract of sale is signed can vary depending on the specific circumstances and practices. In some cases, it may be signed at the initial stage of the conveyancing process, while in other cases, it may be signed after the completion of various due diligence processes and negotiations. It's important to note that once the contract of sale is signed by both parties, it becomes a legally binding document, and both parties are obligated to fulfill the terms outlined within it. Title. Searches. The land registry allows buyers to conduct searches to check the title of a property they are interested in buying. These searches reveal essential information such as the current legal owner, any mortgages or liens on the property, any restrictions or easements, or encumbrances and other relevant details that may affect the property's value or use. Title. Official copies of title documents. The Land Registry provides official copies of title documents, which are legal documents that confirm the ownership and legal status of a property. These documents are essential for establishing proof of ownership. They include the original deed, previous conveyances, and other relevant documents establishing the chain of ownership. The seller's solicitor provides the buyer's solicitor with the title deeds and official copies of the property, which establish the ownership and legal status of the property. These are certified copies of the title register and title plan obtained from the land registry, which provide official information about the property, including its boundaries, registered owners, and any restrictions or charges. Title. What is the certificate of title during the conveyancing process? The solicitors or conveyancers representing the buyer and seller will work to ensure that the property is properly registered in the buyer's name, with the land registry. Once the registration is complete, the land registry will issue the certificate of title directly to the registered owner. The certificate of title is not the same as the title deed, although they are related to each other in the context of property ownership. It is a legal document that serves as official evidence of ownership and rights over a property. The certificate of title contains important information about the property, including property description. It provides a detailed description of the property, including its boundaries, size, and any other relevant details that identify the specific parcel of land. Ownership details. The certificate of title lists the current legal owner or owners of the property. It confirms their ownership rights and establishes them as the registered proprietors. Encumbrances and restrictions. The document may include details of any encumbrances, such as mortgages, liens, or easements which are legal rights or restrictions that affect the property. These encumbrances may have been registered by previous owners or lenders. Rights and Covenants The Certificate of Title may outline any rights or covenants associated with the property, such as rights of way or restrictions on land use. These restrictions are typically meant to ensure compliance with zoning regulations or protect the interests of the community. The Certificate of Title serves as an essential document during property transactions. It provides assurance to potential buyers that the seller has a legal right to sell the property and that it is free from undisclosed encumbrances or disputes. When a property is sold, the Certificate of Title is transferred to the new owner, reflecting the change in ownership. The exchange of the Certificate of Title typically occurs during the completion stage of the conveyancing process. Title the transfer deed. To be signed by buyer and seller. This document transfers the legal ownership of the property from the seller to the buyer. It is signed by both parties and submitted to the land registry for registration. The transfer deed, also known as the deed of transfer or conveyance deed, is a legal document used in the conveyancing process to transfer the ownership of a property from the seller, transferor, to the buyer, transferee. 
it is a key document that establishes the legal transfer of ownership rights. The transfer deed contains details about the property being transferred, such as its description, boundaries, and any rights or restrictions associated with it. It also includes the names and addresses of the transferor and transferee, as well as the purchase price or consideration for the transfer. Both the transferor and transferee must sign the transfer deed, and it is typically prepared by the solicitor or convencer representing the transferor. Once signed, the transfer deed is submitted to the land registry for registration, which legally records the change of ownership and establishes the transferee as the new owner of the property. The transfer deed is a crucial document in the conveyancing process and is essential for ensuring the legal transfer of property ownership rights. Title Registration of Title The solicitor ensures land registry registers the property's title and legal ownership once it is bought. This provides an official record of the property's ownership and creates a legally recognized title that can be used as evidence of ownership. Leaseholder Head Lease and Covenant Your solicitor should obtain a copy of the head lease from the freeholder. You may have to sign a covenant or agreement with the freeholder to abide by the conditions of the head lease. If you plan to sublet certain procedures may apply, so check those out. Exchange of Contracts Signed by both solicitors in the context of property conveyancing in the UK, the contracts of exchange are typically signed by the solicitors or convencers representing the buyer and seller. The actual signing of the contracts of exchange is usually done by the respective solicitors or convencers on behalf of their clients. Once the buyer and seller have agreed upon the terms of the property sale, including the purchase price, completion date, and any specific conditions or provisions, the solicitors or convencers will draft the contracts of exchange based on those agreed terms. They will then send the contracts to each other for review and signature. The solicitor or convencer representing the buyer will ensure that the contract of exchange protects the buyer's interests, while the solicitor or convencer representing the seller will review it to safeguard the seller's rights. Once both parties are satisfied with the terms, they will sign the contracts on behalf of their clients. The signed contracts of exchange are then physically or electronically exchanged between the solicitors or convencers. This exchange is known as exchange of contracts and is a significant milestone in the conveyancing process. Once the contracts are exchanged, the transaction becomes legally binding, and both parties are obligated to complete the sale according to the agreed terms. Completion Pre-completion checks the buyer solicitor conducts final checks and searches to ensure there have been no significant changes since the initial searches were conducted. Completion On the agreed completion date, the balance of the purchase price is transferred from the buyer's convencer to the seller's convencer. The keys to the property are then released to the buyer. And the buyer becomes the legal owner of the property. Completion Statement the buyer's solicitor prepares a completion statement detailing the final financial arrangements for the property purchase, including the balance of the purchase price and any additional costs. Completion Post-completion The convencer settles any outstanding payments, such as stamp duty land tax, registers the change of ownership with the land registry and ensures that the buyer's interests are protected. Lender Mortgage and Finance if the buyer is obtaining a mortgage, the convencer coordinates with the lender to ensure the necessary funds are available for the transaction. They review the mortgage offer and advise the buyer on its terms and conditions. Lender Mortgage deed, signed by borrower and lender. If the buyer is obtaining a mortgage, the mortgage lender prepares the mortgage deed, which sets out the terms of the loan. It is prepared and executed during the mortgage application process usually after the lender has approved the borrower's application and agreed to provide the loan. The mortgage deed is a legally binding document and is typically signed by both the borrower and lender. The mortgage deed is a legal document that establishes a mortgage over a property. It is a key component of the mortgage agreement between the borrower, mortgagor, and the lender, mortgagee. It is a crucial step in the mortgage process and usually occurs before or around the completion of the property purchase. It serves as evidence of the mortgage agreement, and provides a legal framework for the lender to enforce their rights in the event of default by the borrower. The exact timing of signing the mortgage deed can be influenced by factors such as the complexity of the transaction, 
the involvement of solicitors or conveyancers, and any specific requirements or negotiations between the borrower and lender. Generally, the mortgage deed is signed after the borrower's mortgage application has been approved by the lender. After the mortgage deed is signed, it is often registered with the relevant land registry or governing authority to ensure public notice of the mortgage, and to establish the lender's legal interest in the property. This registration helps protect the lender's rights and facilitates transparency in property transactions. The mortgage deed outlines the terms and conditions of the mortgage, including, 1. Loan amount. The amount of money borrowed by the borrower. 2. Interest rate. The rate at which interest will be charged on the loan. 3. Repayment terms. The agreed-upon schedule for repaying the loan, including the frequency and amount of payments. 4. Security. The property being mortgaged serves as security for the loan, and the mortgage deed specifies the details of this security arrangement. 5. Rights and responsibilities. The rights and responsibilities of both the borrower and lender, including any specific clauses or provisions agreed upon. Stamp duty land tax return. The buyer solicitor completes the SDLT return calculating and paying any applicable stamp duty land tax on the property purchase. This is a tax form that must be completed and submitted to HM Revenue and Customs, HMRC, to pay any applicable stamp duty land tax on the property purchase. These are some of the main documents and forms associated with the conveyancing process in the UK. The specific requirements and additional documents may vary depending on the circumstances of the transaction and the region in which the property is located. Keeping records. When you have a buy-to-let residential mortgage, keeping accurate and organized records is essential to manage your property effectively, ensure compliance with tax laws, and make informed decisions about the property. Keep copies of all documents related to the property purchase, including the completion document, mortgage documents, and title deeds. Keep records of all tax-related documents, including tax returns, receipts, invoices, and other correspondence. Retain these for your annual tax return and future capital gains tax purposes.